Hi folks, time for another installment of um, our examination of resource markets. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, demand in this particular case. The very first thing that, again, I want to reiterate is that resource markets are, uh, are virtually identical to the product markets that we've discussed except for the reversals of buyers and sellers. In a resource market, remember that firms demand resources and the households are the ones that are supplying the resources. Um, if we focus in on demand, the demand curve for a resource, just like product markets, uh, will slope downward to the right. Why does it do that? It, it does that for, for two reasons. Just like product markets, the substitution effect comes into play, and that is uh, that firms will substitute um, relatively uh, more expensive resources for less expensive resources if the, the substitution is a decent one. So in my example here, uh, firms uh, will substitute um, away from copper piping if the price of proper po copper piping goes, goes up and towards uh, plastic piping. Uh, if that's a decent substitute for modern construction firms, it would be. In this particular case down here, uh, firms will move away from Manhattan if the price of land goes up in Manhattan. They'll move to places like Dallas where, relatively speaking, the price of land is lower. Again, if that's a decent substitute. So the substitution effect comes into play. Likewise, the income effect does come into play as well. Um, in, in this particular case, uh, firms, just like consumers, we assume that at any given time they have a static amount of, of income. And uh, if the price, in this case, of my machine drops by half, with that static amount of income, you know, firms could, if they want to, uh, buy two machines for, uh, for what they could have, uh, before the price drop, uh, purchased for, for one machine. So, um, again, you know, that both of those effects will produce a situation where as price falls, uh, quantity demand rises, and that's why the demand curve for a resource will slope downward to the right. Um, elasticity, uh, the concept of, of uh, changing quantity demanded in this case for a resource relative to changes in the price of the resource likewise remains the same. Um, the calculation for price elasticity of demand of a resource is identical to the uh, PED calculations that we've done earlier in the year. Um, the amount by which firms change their use of a resource when price of the resource changes depends upon the price elasticity of their resource. Um, calculated as percentage change in quantity demanded of resource divided by the percentage change in the price of the resource. Again, that this is all review or should be and this is all similar, identical actually to product markets. I'll give you an example real quickly. Um, you know, in my case here, if the price of lumber rises by 10% and the quantity demanded falls by 5%, then the price elasticity of demand for lumber would be calculated as a change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. And in this case, that would be 5 over 10, which is 0.5. If uh, my second example of rental space uh, for offices falls by 5%, the quantity demanded increases by 20%, then the price elasticity of uh, demand for office space is, is going to be calculated at 4. And you'll see that come up in, in a second. Again, 20 divided by 5 equals 4. So again, all this is reviewed. Um, the determinants of elasticity uh, are, are exactly the same. Um, the, the I, I guess little, uh, perhaps minorly different. Um, price elasticity for a resource <coughs> is heavily dependent upon the price elasticity of the final product. If the final product is demand elastic, then, then the resource is likewise going to be demand elastic. Um, if the resource costs a lot uh, in relationship to total cost for a firm, um, you, you have relatively uh, elastic goods. And um, <coughs> likewise, too, if there's a uh, if the proportion of total cost is relatively low, you have a relatively inelastic good. There are a wide number of substitutes. You'll have a high PED. If you have a low number of good substitutes, you have low PED. And time period, of course, as firms react to changes in price over a long period of time, you increase the elasticity. So again, all this should be reviewed. See you in the next video, and we'll talk more about demand.